So today we're going to be talking about uh, brain-computer interfaces. Um, and I'm going to begin by telling you a little bit about the science and technology of BCI. And then we'll move into the neuroethics, the, what I'm calling here the societal challenges. So what is a brain-computer interface? Well, it's pretty much what it sounds like. <laughs> it is um, a system for either reading out information from the brain um, to be translated by a computer into uh, motor commands or other forms of communication interacting with the outside world. Or, rather than sending the information out from the brain, uh, it's, a, it's an interface that brings information in. So it's a system for bringing information into the brain in a way that enables the equivalent of sensation or perception. But what's key is, you know, rather than the usual ways that we either reach out and act upon the world or um, receive information from the world, with uh, BCI, you have a, a machine, a computer, interfacing directly with the brain. So you're not using your peripheral nervous system. You're not uh, um, launching the actions with your own muscles or getting the information in through your own retina or cochlea or um, whatever. So the ways in which that uh, interface is implemented um, can vary greatly. The, um, the kind of lowest tech, easiest way to um, rig up a brain-computer interface is using scalp-recorded EEG brain waves. Um, and here you can see a couple of uh, systems that do that. One very simple system that actually um, can connect to your iPhone and um, believe it or not, there are apps <laughs> that will um, either record your EEG to help you um, to learn to meditate and relax, you know, as sort of a biofeedback uh, mechanism. Um, there are also some uh, game, uh, electronic games that use um, EEG uh, picked up from, from outside the head uh, to, you know, move players and so forth in a game. Um, this is a headset uh, created by a company called NeuroSky um, that, uh, you know, is, is used for a kind of brain machine interface that any of you could order online. Mm -hmm. I, d I don't know how much it costs, but uh, um, it's, uh, you know, it's readily available. Um, what you see below that is um, a system with many more electrodes um, that is able to direct a um, wheelchair based on brain waves, based on EEG. And um, this is obviously, you know, a, a, a less uh, um, frivolous use of um, scalp-recorded EEG for brain-machine interface. Um, and the idea is that someone who is paralyzed could, um, could direct a, a wheelchair, like this experimental system um, demonstrates, using brain activity alone. Now the problem with these kinds of systems that um, severely limits their usefulness is, as, as we know um, from our neuroscience courses, um, EEG is a very sort of uh, very limited and kind of coarse-grained measure of brain activity um, and really only picks up a subset of brain activity. Um, it has very poor localizing ability because of um, all the, you know, the, the distance of the electrode from the um, generators of uh, the activity and all the volume conduction um, that uh, that signal undergoes going from the neurons to the, the electrode. Um, and also, um, EEG is only tapping into the activity of um, large numbers of synchronized neurons um, that also happen to be orientated in the right direction and so forth. So, um, so it's very limited. Um, you can get a more localized, kind of better differentiated system from um, electrocorticography, uh, abbreviated ECOG, where they place 
the electrodes right on the surface of the brain, um, which obviously requires opening up the head, so it's you know more invasive. Um, but the the closer location um, uh, enables um, much more differentiated signals, um, so you can learn um, you know more about uh, sort of localized patterns of brain activity. Certainly more localized relative to what you get outside of the head like this. Um, and this kind of uh, process is already done um, routinely uh, for some cases of um, uh, surgery for epilepsy before they um, go in and do the surgery. Uh, they want to map very precisely um, the, uh, the seizures and the brain activity associated with important cognitive functions that they don't want to disrupt. Um, so uh, this is something that is, um, while invasive, um, it is already done routinely for other reasons. Finally, if you want to really get in there and um, get the most fine-grained, um, uh, local and well-differentiated signals from neurons in the cortex, you need to put the electrodes in the cortex, and that is what has been done in various kinds of preclinical research with BCI. So um, what you see up here is um, a monkey who has um, electrodes in his motor cortex, and a small number of human